Hey, how's it going, everybody? John Eric Pinkowski with uh, Pacific Northwest Computers. I just wanted to do a little video on the recent 3D printer stuff um, I've kind of gotten into in the last month. Um, it has been fairly intense. <laughs> I've done a lot, printed a lot, learned a lot, and I've done some different filaments. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to kind of share some of what I've learned. Um, the biggest thing is, or are the upgrades that you can get for Creality's Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro. Um, these are the printers that I've started with, and I now have a Prusa i3 MK3S, which is amazing, but it is way more expensive uh, than the Ender 3s. So uh, Ender 3 I started with, it's a little bit more manual, um, but it's a lot cheaper, and if you know what to upgrade, you can make your printing experience way, way, way easier. So... Without further ado, I just kind of wanted to run through some of the Amazon parts that I've seen and just kind of go through those with you and let you know what's worked for me, what hasn't, um, experience with parts that have kind of worked, um, things that have not worked at all, and things that I do now like mandatory if I ever hear people are having problems or uh, someone gets a new printer and they're just looking what to get. So without further ado, let's hop over here. And I would say the, the biggest thing right off the bat is the extruder. Um, this is the actual part of the printer that will put the filament into your hot end. Um, a couple of things with this. First of all, the one that you get with the Ender 3 is completely plastic, um, which some people have had problems, some people have not had problems. Um, I personally ran into problems right out of the gate. Um, so I did order one of these, and I actually ended up getting the dual gear um, extruder, which I'm not sure is on here right away. The dual gear one actually has two mechanisms that will push your um, filament into your machine. Let me just look this up. Dual gear. And there we go. So essentially what you've got, instead of having a ball bearing on the other side that your main gear presses into, it's this little center part, on the other side where this ball bearing or a bearing would be, um, there's another actual sprocket with teeth. And I put this on my original Ender 3, and uh, I haven't had to look away since. On my PETG Ender 3 that I have, um, I actually have that normal one, the just the regular old... Um, metal extruder upgrade and i have been having some slipping problems with it um, i ended up moving my spool to the left side of my ender 3 which has helped a lot um thingiverse let me just show you ender 3 side spool yep this little guy so essentially you can move your uh spool from the top of your printer down to the side and then that creates a much more even feeding into your actual extruder mechanism um, and this has helped a lot um, it's not a for sure thing and i actually have one of those dual drivers just in case i need to use it um, i already bought it and i've got it in a bag just kind of waiting um, but that also helped a lot so um that's really the biggest thing I would say right out of the gate, the extruder. Now, the other problem with these extruders, though, is that when you put a new one on, your machine probably will not put out the correct filament length. Um, so I have some instructions, and I'm probably going to do another video when it comes to calibration. But essentially, there is a basic procedure you can do to make sure you're getting out the filament that you're needing, meaning that if you ask for 100 millimeters of filament, your machine will put out 100 millimeters of filament. A very common problem with Ender 3s is under extrusion, meaning that your printer isn't putting out enough filament and your prints will end up getting very stringy, layers won't stick together, walls won't stick together, and so you've got to up that extrusion up. Um, so between upgrading to a better metal extruder and then also getting your extrusion dialed in, once you do it, that's it. You don't have to mess with this stuff ever, ever, ever again. Um, so going on with that, though, uh, the next biggest thing would be this kit. Um, this is essentially like an all-in-one upgrade that you can get. Um, 
essentially you get this high temperature Capricorn tubing, which has a higher temperature uh, rating than the standard PTFE tubing that comes with your Ender 3. Unless you're going to be doing like really high temperature stuff like PETG or ABS. I don't even think these things can do nylon, but you really technically don't need to have a high temperature tube, um, but it also has some lubrication to help the filament actually move through the tubing. So this is something that I've put on both of my printers and I haven't looked back since. Um, the other thing would be these uh, large springs that you can get. Now these springs, um, ah, they're getting kind of cut off here. Let me see if I can resize my screen. Essentially, these springs are for your bed. So meaning that your, your leveling bed that you have that you're actually printing your items onto. Um, the springs that come with it are pretty chinzy and cheap. There we go. Now you can see everything. Um, and these springs are a lot better. Um, on one of my printers, they installed perfectly. I plopped them in the printer. Everything leveled beautifully. was off and running within just a few minutes. My other printer that I got for cheap and I had to fix because it was like a, something was wrong with it. Um, I put these springs on and I actually had to adjust um, the, the, the Z mechanism or the trigger. So that way when the print head would start coming down, it wouldn't smash onto the board because these springs actually made my board sit up much higher. So I had to actually move that Z axis um, uh, contact point a little bit higher up so that way my print head would not hit my print bed anymore um, but these things i used to have to level my bed every single time after every single print i would have to level it now i would say after about four prints i would say i've got to check it a little bit and it's usually not off by much but these considerably helped that process i can't stress enough how crazy of a simple upgrade this was and it like totally took care of a lot of my bed leveling procedures per se um the next thing are these tl smoothers now i might actually be jumping the gun a little bit let me look up this little guy yeah the silent motherboard so this is something that I have actually put onto both of my printers now. Essentially, the board that you get with your Ender 3 is just a stock plain old board. Um, you get basic stepper driver motors or chips that, that control your motors. The drivers are, are inexpensive. Um, the biggest thing a lot of people say about this printer or the Ender 3 in general is that it's loud. Um, this will help a lot with it being a lot more quiet. Um, because also it has upgraded stepper drivers, um, the motors actually run a lot quieter. Um, there's still a little bit of jerk with them. So this is something that, especially now that I found the legit Creality upgrade board, there are some other boards on Amazon that are cheap, cheaper, um, and they're what are called clones. So they're not actually made by Creality. They'll have Creality branding. It'll look like Creality but it's not actually made by them. It's someone else that made a duplicate board, cloned their software, boom, you get a cheap board. Problem with that, I had a ton of problems right out of the gate with my first silent board that I got because it was a clone. I didn't pay attention to that when I was buying it. So in the last week, I've gotten one of these actual Creality, from Creality, uh, silent motherboards. Got it in both my printers and it's just plug and play. The other thing too that's amazing is that when I got my clone board I had to actually take it apart, get an Arduino, do the whole boot bootloader firmware flashing song and dance which was a nightmare. This is plugged in and it has the newest version of their bootloader or their software. So on the ad it says it's version 1.1.5. You actually get version 1.1.8. So it's the newest, latest and greatest version. And I believe, I can't say for sure, um, because I deactivated my BL Touch on my printer, but it should be BL Touch compatible right out of the box too. You will need to get um, a special little jumper board. Let me see if I can... See if I can find this little guy. And actually, when you buy a BL Touch, it will actually come with this board. Essentially, this is the board that you plug in on the same header as your LCD display. And then this actually kind of piggybacks the signal 5 volt and ground from that connection. So you can add a you know BL Touch. You can add a uh, filament sensor. I haven't tried piggybacking a bunch of these because I want to add a filament sensor and a BL Touch to one of my printers. Um, 
and there's actually some other things you can get like um, uh, booster boards I can't remember what they're called but it's a breakout board essentially where you can take power off the main power supply and hook up other stuff so that would be an option as well but this is plugs right in you plug your LCD in plug in your BL touch and you're off to the races um, kind of jumped ahead there but and since we're on the BL touch bandwagon let's go to that now my BL touch when I ordered this this is actually a auto bed leveling mechanism for Creality and other 3d printers there are other sensors out there um, there are kind of like field sensors or proximity sensors this is a mechanical sensor which not a lot of people are a fan of since there are mechanical parts that have to move those parts can fail they can break they're not exactly hundred percent precise and accurate um, but I have had perfectly good luck just using manual bed leveling. Um, I think the main problem with my BL Touch was that I was using a clone board. Um, I have actually a new board coming in for my system that has the BL Touch, and I'm hoping that having an actual Creality board will make it plug and play. Um, the Z offset and and not to go too nerdy on the BL Touch setup. Essentially, the settings I was putting in for the BL Touch just were not sticking, or they would randomly save, they would randomly load. It was a huge problem. So I have this currently disconnected, but what I've kind of gotten the sense of from a lot of the videos I've watched, a lot of the research that I've done, these auto leveling sensors are really only if you have a huge printer. So like if you have a CR10, um, you know, one of those like, big build plate like 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter by 350 or whatever those have such a large surface that you really want to make sure you know one point and this point and that point and that point you know everything is going to be the same height with these smaller boards it's it's tiny i mean you've got like maybe a 11 12 inch maybe 10 inch little square so there's not much to get thrown off uh yes the corners do get out of whack that's, I mean, duh, it's a, it's a surface. It, it can be leveled and it can get out of level, but the need for something that auto levels it for you, my Prusa, I love it. I love not having to mess with it. I've heard some stuff about larger prints getting out of whack, but I haven't hit that yet, but I've been manually dialing in my Ender threes perfectly fine manually. They print flawlessly, and again, with those upgraded springs, it's like every four or fifth print, I'll have to go in and just do a quick little double check, make a few minor adjustments, and then it's off to the races again. So, I don't know if this is really a necessity. Um, you get a big printer, probably, if you get lucky and are able to just plug this in and go, great. But my experience with the BL Touch is you're going to have to modify your board, you're going to have to modify your firmware, you're going to have to get an Uno Arduino to be able to actually do that process um, you're going to have to flash the firmware there's a lot that's involved and unless you're technically inclined even in the slightest it's going to be a nightmare so i would just stick with doing the heavy springs and not messing with that at all <laughs> just get those heavy duty springs manually mesh your bed and yeah or manual level your bed sorry meshing is when it does the auto leveling it's called mesh leveling um, at least from what I've learned so far um, okay so then next thing from all of this are these things called TL smoothers um, these are actually a little chip that smooths or this is the best way I can describe it it kind of just smooths out the signal that's being sent from your stepper drivers uh, to your stepper motors. So instead of it getting a command and just being like, uh, 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 go, it's like, ah, I'm going to go into it. Ah, I'm going to come out of it. So you, a lot of the jerkiness you get in your prints, um, corner problems, um, just, you know, pretty much artifacts from the, the print head to snapping around and moving around to where it needs to go. This fixes all of that. And I would also say it also helps with the volume. Um, I have these installed in um or in accordance or in adjacent with that silent board that i showed you previously and with the silent board and these smoothers the thing is so quiet and is so smooth and it's like a whole new printer um, i don't get these three packs i get the four pack uh, that way you have xyz and your extruder um, i like to smooth everything out i have this on both of my printers um, i have pr tried to print off some of these like tl smoother like mounting 
plate things off of Thingiverse, they do not work with the Ender 3 Pro. I don't know if it works with the Ender 3, but with the Pro, they do not fit in the casing. Um, I was just able to get the boards in and I would push the heat sinks against the, the actual aluminum frame of the printer to help dissipate the heat and everything installed beautifully. The fan on the on the actual circuit board installs back on to totally fine. Nothing's in the way. No wires are in the way. It looks really clean and the printer runs absolutely amazing. So that's another big thing that I would say is an absolute must. Um, this little guy, so Z-Rod bearing holder. A lot of printers you'll see on the Z-Rod, the thing that actually goes up and down, um, it'll have something on the top that will lock it into the printer. Like Prusa has these, like MakerBot, Ultramaker, a lot of those guys have them. The thing with Creality though, and I noticed this right out of the gate, is when I installed the Z-axis motor on the printer, I could tell it was not in alignment. It's actually completely out of whack. And even with the mounting brackets they give you, I could not get it true. There are a lot of little things that you can download off of uh, Thingiverse to be able to try to fix that. Um, I don't have the time or the patience um, to mess with that. Essentially, as long as I don't put anything on, yeah, these things. So they're like little spacers that you can install to like help get your Z axis in alignment. Essentially, I had zero problems with my printer. Let me get this off all out of here. I had zero problems with my printer until I got this thing. Once I bought this and put it on my Z axis, my printers or my prints would stop halfway through. It would get up a little way and it would start binding on the Z axis and then the print would bottom out. Everything would be squashed or the print would fail. Take this little guy off. No more binding. Everything worked perfectly. So this would be a great addition if you get your Z axis true with all those little adapters and, and, and shims and all that stuff and you get it like 100% true, this is what you would use to lock that into place. If you're not going to do all of that work, do not get this. <laughs> I had so many problems with this thing installed and I tried installing it loose. I tried in changing the actual screws on the Z rod that hold the Z rod to the, the extruder. Did all this stuff to try to make it work. Nothing. Took this off. Everything went back to printing beautifully. So I can't vouch for this thing and it was just a waste of money. So do not get this Z rod bearing holder. If by chance you did happen to get an awesome printer and it's completely true, awesome more power to you but i personally think it's a waste of money um the next thing would be the print beds um i do use just the stock print bed for my ender 3 that i use for pla um the magnetic print bed that comes with it is absolutely amazing um it comes right off you can just peel it parts come right off it adds a really nice texture to the parts when you print so it has a really great finish um i did switch to and use a glass bed for a little while um what's funny is like right off the bed it's that it says no edge curling I have the most edge curling problems with glass and PEI sheets. The standard stock sheet that came with the Ender 3 never had a problem with prints lifting, curling, especially the PEI. Um, that's something a little bit different, so we'll go there next. But for the glass, the big thing with the glass is, again, going back to bed leveling, 3D printers, they've got to have a, a level bed for it to print on. Obviously, if there's anything off, you're going to get weird defects as it actually prints. With the glass... It's, you know, pretty much essentially going to be 100% smooth. There's not going to be any deviations of the surface. So that's the plus side. The downside is it doesn't quite have the sticking properties that PEI or um, just the regular stock Creality, you know, magnetic layered coated sheet you know, can do. Um, the first, I would say five or six prints I did with glass, they were amazing. Everything stuck beautifully, had zero problems. After a little while, you're pretty much going to be living with a glue stick. Um, the surface that they put on here is kind of textured. So when you first get the actual, you know, little pad, you see those little dots, there's something that it grabs onto. But since you can't peel the sheet off and you actually have to, you know, either scrape the part off or you have to take the, the bed completely off and then try to scrape it off. The bottom line is, is that you're scraping this with a scraper. So all of that little textured sticky stuff that they put on there to help you stick your prints to it, it's going to go bye-bye, bye-bye, it going away, not coming back. So glue stick will become your best friend because without that, pretty much you're going to have like a 50-50 chance of your 
prints not sticking or starting to come off once you do start the print you're gonna have a ton of first layer problems at least i did so with glue stick it pretty really much almost solved everything but then you get this really weird film on the bottom of your prints that doesn't always come off properly you have different finishes different finish qualities and differences because of the glue so i started to shy away from that pretty quickly um so Again, I just use the stock bed. Let me just show you that really fast. This is just for like PLA. Yeah, just a regular old magnetic build surface. Super simple. Can flex it. It's got a nice little con like like little texture to the top. Um, absolutely amazing. Um, the next thing though would be the PEI sheets. So when I first got this printer, I'm like, oh, everybody says PEI is amazing. You have to use PEI. It is the best. It is awesome. But I also had first layer problems. I had problems with stuff coming off. Because it's a metal plate that they sell you. Uh, where is it? Where's the Creality PEI? You know what? Actually, I think it's out of stock now. I don't think they're making that anymore. At least from the company that I had bought and purchased mine from. It kind of looked like that. Essentially, it's like a hotbed and it's got a PEI surface on it, but because the bed is metal, it runs a little bit hotter than the regular plate, like the other surface that you're running. So like when I do, uh, I use this on my PETG printer I have set up. Um, it's an Ender 3 Pro as well. So I have one for PLA, one for PETG. I use this exclusively on the PETG printer um, just because of the higher temperatures it just sticks super, super, super well. Um, I've had zero problems with it. When I was using the the stock Ender 3 bo um, uh, magnetic surface when I was first printing in PETG, uh, the prints were sticking to it way, way, way badly. Um, I mean, it was like I actually damaged one of my sheets trying to get a PEG or PETG turntable off that I was making for a 3D scanner. So as soon as I switched to PEI um, for my PETG printing, um, I can hold the higher temperatures better, hotter, and it also sticks without a problem and I can pop the parts off immediately. There's zero problems getting the stuff off. So for PLA, it might be a little much, um, but for PETG, that's all I use now. This is like my go-to board. I wouldn't say this brand specifically. I don't have any experience with them, but it looks just like this. It's a metal board. It's got a PETG or a PEI sticker across the top of it. That's it. And I even bought like an extra sticker just in case I have to peel that sucker off um, and, you know, replace it because it's all messed up. Um, a couple of other things, too, that I've noticed. There are like upgraded wheels that you can get that are aluminum. These are your bed leveling wheels. I see no purpose in that whatsoever. The plastic ones work perfectly fine. Um, I would think that metal too would have more of, a, of a, a chance to slip maybe. The plastic probably grips a little bit better. So that's my personal opinion. Um, and then they also sell a bunch of stuff like you can get new hot ends. Um, I have not done yet or haven't done that yet. I don't really plan on to unless I get into like ABS or something. These micro Swiss hot ends are really popular. Um, there's also E3D, um, Tornado. There's a bunch of them. I haven't messed with that. Um, the only thing I have done though is I have printed a couple of these aftermarket uh, vent rings. Um, these are something that I recommend. Even if you don't go completely all out and do like one of those huge bullseye like cooling systems, which I do have. These things work great. Um, this little Ender 3 vent ring um, I've used on both my printers since like day one, and I only recently upgraded to the bullseye. That thing is a, oh, I'll see if I can spell bullseye. That thing is a pain in the butt. You really have a lot of work you've got to put in to be able to make this thing. You're going to be printing parts. You're going to have to be adding screws. It's it's a bit of a process. But I do have this bullseye um, cooler uh, printed and on my PEGG system. I have not tried this Petsfang one. I've seen a lot of people use it. I just haven't used it yet. I like the bullseye look a lot better. Um, but this is this is something that you can add to your printers i would definitely say there's a very valid valid argument out there right now that cooling isn't really exactly that important other than if you're printing really fast if you're printing fast your stuff has to cool so the next layer can get on it and also if you have like edges starting to come out that needs to cool so it doesn't start to droop if you're doing just like a standard slow print there's even an argument out there that 
you don't even have to have cooling um, especially when you get into the higher temperature filaments like abs uh, petg you're not going to want to have a whole lot of air on it um, i actually run full air on my petg system but that's usually because I'm running really fast prints and I'm trying to get it done like as quick as possible. So if I'm doing something slow and tedious, I'll keep it at like 30 to 50% air cooling. So the cooling thing, ah, maybe, um, there's just a lot of videos out there where like before and after there's very little difference. Um, I think it's more of your personal taste, um, what you're actually printing. Um, I have seen a difference with the bullseye with my PETG system. It's helped a lot for the fast printing, but I think that all comes down to you and your printing style and what you're trying to print. And that just comes kind of through trial and error. Um, outside of all of that stuff, I think that's really like the nut and core, like basics of it all. You know, you've got your extruder, you've got your board, you have your motor smoothers, you've got the springs for your bed. Um, uh, yeah, um, some cooling, you could kind of mess with that. Um, and then you also have the build plates, glass, PEI, and the regular just magnetic plastic covered textured sheets, which I think they all have their benefit and purpose. Um, so I hope this helps a little bit with all of this stuff that you can find on the internet as far as what you can upgrade your Ender 3 to. And when I first started looking into this and buying stuff, it was like, it was really hit or miss. So I just thought I would do a little video, kind of like bring things down a little bit, try to explain things a bit in case you wanted to get into 3D printing. Um, you can definitely get a printer and just, you know, right out of the gate, go, you know, just start printing. But when you want to be doing like larger projects, you know, increase the quality of your print. Um, yeah, just kind of move to that next level and get out of the, I just started mode. These upgrades will help a lot. And also too, if you're trying to crank out consistent prints and you know, not have to be always babysitting these little guys. These these upgrades will help a lot. So I do hope this helps somebody out, out there. And as always, I love to help. And I'm going to hopefully start trying to do this. But if you need any help with computers, technology, IT, or tech, give us a call at Pacific Northwest Computers at 360-624-7379. Our email is just, actually, you can just email me directly, john at pnwcomputers.com. Just J-O-N, no H. Um, and then also our website, www.pnwcomputers.com. Uh, we're here in the Vancouver, South, Vancouver, Washington, Southwest Washington area. And uh, do pretty much go, I go pretty far north and we deal with Portland and stuff. So if you're looking for an IT guy or a consultant or just need some help, hi, give me a call. All right, y'all. Hope you have a great day. And uh, until next time.